Now to our visit to Alaska and this sprawling joint military base. The Chinese balloon that entered the U.S. over Alaska in January shined a light on the state and its strategic importance, especially as adversaries like Russia and China demonstrate new capabilities. It is the jarring signal of another step in an uneasy and long-running dance between the U.S. and Russia. That buzzer sending an Air Force F-16 racing from its combat alert shelter near Anchorage to intercept Russian warplanes probing international airspace near Alaska. This mission a drill, but real intercepts of Russian planes an almost monthly occurrence, though fewer officials say since the war in Ukraine. F-16 pilot Brent Rist has flown in some of the encounters. When we're side by side, we're not communicating with them. There is always the standard message that to, to let them know that they're approaching uh, American airspace. Uh, and it, it's professional uh, at all times. Is the threat level increasing uh, in, in Alaska? I, I think the threat level is increasing. Lieutenant General Dave Nahum leads the Alaska Command and the Alaska NORAD region. Any threats coming from Russia, China, and I mean, that part of the world into America, they're, they're first going to cross into Alaska airspace. Uh, this, this is kind of on the, on the front lines for, for America and Canada. All right, here we go. Start three. NORAD draws on U.S. and Canadian military assets for its air defense missions, from fighter units to Alaska National Guard tanker missions to a guard unit that tracks and IDs aircraft. The fighters that are scrambled off on alert typically don't have a lot of endurance, and the distances in Alaska are vast, and so they require the support of tanker aircraft, like this KC-135 we're flying aboard now. I take in the view from a rear window as Chief Master Sergeant Wes Hudnell directs fuel into a pair of F-16s. Offload complete. Above a dramatic landscape. Can the fighters on their own make it to where they need to go? They can't. Our main goal is to offload the fuel to them so they can go off and do their mission. And those missions are critical. In February, Lieutenant Colonel Mike Kendall in his F-22 intercepted a balloon just weeks after that infamous Chinese balloon crossed the U.S. NORAD was on high alert. Once we got the notification, we launched, went north, and just waited for direction on what they wanted us to do. It was go inspect, fly around, provide information back to NORAD of what we were seeing. Yeah, was it kind of a surprise for you to, to encounter that kind of a vehicle? We knew what the basics what we were going out to do, but it was definitely interesting and more, it became real once we got up north. We're like, okay, there's actually something here. The big picture of potential threats to North America is captured at places like this, a long-range radar station on the Aleutian Peninsula. It's a big picture, but some wonder whether it's wide enough. Colonel Brianna Fulton coordinates support for dozens of sites, including this one in King Salmon, Alaska. Can you tell us if, if these radar sites were able to see the balloon? These radar sites were absolutely able to see the balloons. So where was the disconnect? The disconnect is primarily in how we filter the data. Officials now looking at more raw radar data in order to better pick out slower objects like balloons as it pushes for newer systems that can actually see over the horizon. We do not currently have that capability, but that is something that will be coming. NORAD is now leaning toward bringing AI into the picture to process data far faster than now. Underscoring, however, people, whether in a cockpit or in front of a radar screen, will still be the most important eyes and ears. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.